Hi everyone and thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Tanya Arora. Um, I'm a data scientist in Crunch Intelligence. Uh, Crunch Intelligence is a platform of augmented analytics and business intelligence for business enterprises. Today I'm going to present our work on Annex. It is an artificial named entity classifier based on bidirectional LSTM for an AI-based business analysis. This is a joint work with Neha Prabhu Gaunkar, Kanesh Subramanian, and Kathy Lee. The outline for today's presentation will be, I'll be introducing you with the problem statement and where Annex comes into the picture. I'll share the literature review and the methodologies we went for, and I'll describe the evaluation and results before concluding it in the end. At Trust, we have built a platform which is which performs the function of a business analyst, and it's one of the main features is having a natural language interface between a user and data. This allows a user to ask any question in natural language and get the insights of their data. This natural language interface is capable of interpreting the ambiguous questions by users understand the intent within the question, the entities and the relations between them, and also convert the final result into an internal database query and return the final result into an answer or a list of answers in the form of trends, bar graphs, tables, and numbers. The input to this natural language interface is a question by a user in natural language. This is processed and analyzed and finally, the results are returned in the form of these insights. This system is capable of answering a variety of questions. For example, it can be a data retrieval type of question, it can, like a direct question involving a metric or an entity. For example, what is the sales in New York? Or it can also be a comparative question, like uh, what is the shipment in Jan versus Feb? or east versus web this can be uh, this comparative question is something that involves two or more entities or time periods and the question can also be like a, a condition question where it has a condition on entities for example cities having sales more than 3 million and less than 8 million or uh, it can be a question with filters like top or bottom for example top five stores in Texas. Um, it can also be, uh, it is also capable of answering an incomplete or non-elucidated question like just sales or just last month. And finally, the question can also be uh, including complex time periods like MTD, month till date sales for last three years for each or daily sales from Jan to March 15, 2021. The task of uh, an AI-based business analyst is to automatically extract the, uh, understand and extract the entities within the question and get the right answer in the final result. Now, in this, one of the main challenges in this is to identify the intent, the entities within the question and find the relations between them. Classification and identifying and classification of entities is a non-trivial task, especially when the user's question is ambiguous. And it can be a case where an entity might be classified into multiple categories, which may lead to misinterpretations mm -hmm. in the final mm -hmm. result during question interpretation. Annex here aims to identify and classify an entity into the specific entity category specific to our business domain. Mean entity recognition is a task which aims to identify entities in text and classify them into entity categories. Question interpretation is, question interpreter is one such module in the natural language interface we saw earlier. It's one of the main tasks is to extract the entity within the question to perform the process of analyzing, processing, processing the question, and getting the results in the end. It faces the challenge of 
uh, dealing with ambiguous questions where multiple uh, when one entity can be categorized into multiple entities and may lead to uh, misinterpretation this is why it relies heavily on that, on named entity recognition for this entity extraction for example uh, in the first table we see a few examples of entities and entity categories and in our system if the question is how many cars were sold in new york the question interpreter uh, needs the identification of cars as uh, an entity with entity category product and new york is an entity of entity category region because uh, this is a closed domain system in such cases there are chances of um, having an entity misclassified into multiple categories which is why uh, it uh, needs uh, it critically relies on a correct um, named entity recognition module within the system we explored several high quality named entity recognizers including sanford and cp though they are more focused and trained on open domain text data which we found unsuitable for our closed domain application for example in such cases the business entities like sales or number of cars sold will remain unrecognized because uh, these models mainly uh, only recognize proper nouns or uh, numbers or alpha numerics like dates as entities and also entities in a closed domain can be verbs or adjectives and we ob- we also explored part of these tags and uh, though we found them sensitive to case types and domains on the data of uh, on the training data which they are trained for example for a question what is the sales of greater cincy east where greater cincy east is a location it correctly detects three proper nouns greater cincy and east however if this same entity occur in smaller case in the same frame of question the tag the post tag detects cincy as an adjective um while building a named entity recognition with lstm we found bidirectional lstm as more potent than a unidirectional one um and we saw uh, that the existing advanced neural models uh, for the same task use a combination of bilsms with convolutional neural networks or convolutional neural networks with the conditional random field approach so they are suitable for open domain systems uh, which we found uh, not suitable for our case since our system uh, is a closed domain where every uh, where many entities or terms uh, do not have uh, where the entities do not have any associated semantic meaning with them so we finally used a bilsm model alone for our named entity classification task for closed domain system entity disambiguation is also a challenging task especially when the user questions are short and there is insufficient context to classify them uh, correctly frank itel has proposed uh, a way of using external knowledge to improve semantic uh, matching between a candidate entity and the mentioned context using external knowledge they have proposed use of uh, two knowledge graph being a conceptual graph knowledge graph and and a factual knowledge graph to improve the entity uh, disambiguation model we have also similarly a uh, used knowledge dictionary which we will see in the following slide Uh, we will see uh, the entity categories for our named entity classification task since in our system entity holds a different significance in here we uh, introduce two terms for uh, reference here attribute is a term which refers to an entity identified in a question by the named entity classification classifier and attribute class refers to the entity's category now coming to the entity category supported by the named entity classification task entity refers to uh, any uh, id value of like the region store brand or actual names of the values for example new york delhi 
or taxi entity type refers to uh, the type of an entity for example new york is an entity having city as entity type new york also is an entity which may have entity which has an entity type of state and coca cola is an entity with brand as an entity type and diet coke is an entity with the brand as its entity type matrix is uh, any uh, countable concept in a database for example it can be sales or sold or revenue these terms can be identified as matrix and fourth category is conditions and filters for example uh, terms like highest or top k or any other conditions that the user want to apply on the attribute will be the conditions and filters temporal uh, is and refers to or any time and period value for example this week uh, from jan 31 2020 to december 31 2021 or jan 2018 and it can also be uh, business specific and abbreviations like ytd year to date and q1 gfn and so on This is an overall architecture of AI-based business analysis. Uh, the input to the system is a user's question in natural language, and it is sent to the question interpreter. Within this question interpreter, it is passed through PI, which is period identifier. It identifies and classifies all the temporals within the question. And second module uh, is. condition and filter which identifies all the conditions and filter attributes in the question these two uh, attributes identified by these two modules are finally sent to the annex to identify the rest of attributes in the question which uses knowledge dictionary to identify them we will see it in the next step here we three create three uh, we create three knowledge dictionary uh, based on Uh, each for entity entity type and metric attributes we saw earlier and each dictionary contains the words corresponding to its attribute type we also create a fourth dictionary to contain words that can that occur across multiple dictionaries for example a customer segment sales term in this a customer segment also appears in entity type dictionary customer 1 appears in entity dictionary and sales appears in metric dictionary during data augmentation uh, we begin with taking a historical dump of 1442 questions and include all the questions which has entity entity type and metric tokens in each, in each of them we perform templating to generate more questions by taking each question and replacing the attributes with their placeholders and few complex templates are generated synthetically we can see the way the templating of question was done in this figure now while using those templates to create more questions we finally use the entity and metric dictionary and iterate them over all the templates and the placeholders are replaced with the tokens from respective dictionaries in this process <coughs> we finally uh, generate 1127000 uh, questions generated by this templating approach in total while uh, creating these uh, questions and replacing the placeholders the ids are Uh, when we have the id being replaced for entity we also include the entity type along with this whereas in case we include uh, just the entity name for entity we exclude the entity type during this process that the way we see in the first table and the second one where 90 is an entity and we also include entity type before this and in the second case when region west is an entity we include it as is in the generated question uh, this is the system architecture of question interpreter which uses anec internally and is a part of natural language interface we saw earlier so here when we receive a question in natural language form it first passes through period identifier to identify all the temporals 
next it is sent to the condition identifier to identify all the conditions and filters and after identifying the two attributes it is finally sent to anet along with the question internally anet uses and sends this question uh, to a part of the tagger using stanford pos tagger and this pos tag annotated question is converted to a feature matrix which is finally sent to the bidirectional lsta model to classify all the terms uh, and get the entities and it uses knowledge in this process while creating the feature vector uh, and uh, and knowing that we get the pos tag annotated question to create the feature vector we group eight of the pos uh, we group all the pos tags into eight groups and apart of those apart from those eight groups we create four more classes in which the classes 9 to 11 are obtained from knowledge dictionary and it is created based on the presence of a term or its lemma in the knowledge dictionary the 12th class indicates if that term is either a padding or unknown or any punctuation mark now the 12 classes together form the feature matrix for the bidirectional lsta model the output for each token from the bilsta model is a vector having six classes each class reflects the probability of a word belonging to a particular category with respect to the named entity classification tag this word is finally tagged with the class having the maximum probability we see the model details here and the feature vector being passed to the model uh, this is the bidirectional model system here and the output of each word from each network is passed to the softmax layer the model hyperparameters and dimensions here so this is uh, a recurrent neural network uh, based on a bidirectional lstm unit model Uh, the way we saw earlier, and that the output from the bidirectional model is the probability for an entity belonging to an attribute class. With this, it is difficult to uh, because it's the probability for every word being belonging to an entity class. It is difficult to uh, determine for co-located attributes if they uh, if the attributes together form a phrase. which is a part of the knowledge database so this is where we use knowledge query to determine that to avoid any uh, any classification where an entity may be classified to multiple uh, entity categories or even missing out on a correct identification which we will see in a few examples next. so a knowledge query is a query made to the knowledge dictionary for linking these attribute tokens with their labeled entries in the database without uh, having this link to the knowledge uh, it is difficult to identify the entity class for uh, entities which are co-located together this we can see from the scenarios for example uh, in scenario 1 uh, it is useful to determine if the word individually identified as same attribute class together will form a phrase in a database for example uh, united states and america are individually identified as belonging to entity type attribute class so in this case if they are together uh, use in knowledge query to check their presence in knowledge dictionary they will be together uh, combined as a single phrase and entity and that will be the correct Uh, interpretation in the final result in scenario 2 knowledge query is also useful to perform disambiguation if a word identifies an attribute class um, can belong to multiple attributes in the database for example a single term sales can be belonging to an attribute uh, item sold or it can also be interpreted as unit sales on the right side we see this knowledge query process 
the terms highlighted are the terms uh, that the bidirectional model uh, identified as uh, terms which uh, terms with a particular attribute class and this is where we see sales can be uh, all these three alternative um, entities within the knowledge it can be dollar sales or total sales or even sales Uh, the knowledge query process can be uh, described in three steps. First is grouping. In this, tokens belonging to the same attribute category are grouped together as one, and successive knowledge queries are performed to extract entity names for the group of tokens. It makes as several assumptions. One is uh, that the successive words labeled with the same attribute class are grouped together. For example, entities like greater, since and is. can be combined into a single entity the second assumption is that successive words of the same attribute class when separated by a single non named entity can also be assigned in the same group for example uh, portland oregon is an entity and number of cars service is a metric now this also has a limitation where several entities classified into a single the same attribute class may actually be separated by a distinguished coordinating conjunction conjunction or even a comma to separate them and may be and uh, these may be grouped together into a single entity now this limitation is handled in the next step with the disambiguation step this involves repeated calls to knowledge dictionary for example uh, if we have a phrase chicago dallas texas and san francisco call california This phrase includes three entities within it, which is Chicago, Dallas, Texas, and San Francisco, California. The first step in this ambiguation is to remove the stop words and punctuation mark, and second step is making query for words starting from the end of the string one by one into the knowledge dictionary. A successful response from the knowledge dictionary indicates a match for this phrase. found in knowledge dictionary an empty response refers to no match found so in this way uh, we can see first it makes a call to the knowledge dictionary with just the word california it receives a successful response for it so in the second step it will come make another query where it will include california as well as the word preceding this so this will make a call for san francisco as well as california it receives a successful response in this step again so this time it will make another query to the knowledge which will include san francisco and california all of them together by receiving a successful response in this step also it will again make a query with this time including texas also now since uh, Texas included with San Francisco, California will lead to an empty response from the knowledge. The result from previous step, which was successful, will be saved, and the rest of the word will now be sent back as a beginning step to check in with presence in the knowledge. So this time the call will only be made for Texas, and by receiving a successful response for that, it will again now begin. including the words preceding this one by one to make more success, to make more calls so this time it will make it will receive a successful response for dallas and texas both again finally when it will include uh, another uh, it in, when it will include chicago in another call it will receive an empty response so finally it will again <coughs> store the response for dallas and texas and make an individual call for chicago and this way uh, it will finally result in all valid terms a in the final result being present in knowledge also uh, this is uh, for this uses recursive function to make these calls and this ambiguate a long way we evaluated the system by generating a dataset from uh, templating Uh, we use 60 20 20 data split uh, methods and the data set was evaluated on gold data set with 120 samples 
the metrics were calculated at question as well as data set level uh, based on the entities present in the question the five entities we saw as well as the sibling relations identified from the uh, result uh, from the resulting step after entity recognition task three lists are captured based on the mvc5 evaluation metrics um, uh, explained by chinchor et al we, we will see that reference in the end these three lists are match one of them is matches it is a list containing all the entities and sibling relations that match perfectly from both the predicted list as well as the ground truth list there are purest results in the second list in which the entities and sibling relations that are present that are present in predicted list but not in the ground truth list third is the list of missing where the entities and sibling relations that are present in ground truth list but not in the predicted list the evaluation is done using three metrics Uh, using the list we created earlier to get the precision we call F1 score and accuracy. The accuracy. Uh, so firstly, the question level metrics are calculated, and the aggregated level metrics are calculated using the question metrics. Finally, the accuracy is calculated by combining the results from uh, using the micro averaging technique of the and you see five evaluation technique mentioned earlier uh, while calculating the accuracy we consider only those questions as correctly identified where all the entities in a question were identified correctly any question which had only partial entities identified correctly will be treated as uh, an incorrect an incorrect question entirely and we use two types of uh, comparator fit and partial where uh, in fit comparator all the properties of the entities and sibling relations must be equal for both the entities and sibling relations to be considered equal with partial comparator way even if the span like the start and end indices of an entity or sibling relation is incorrect as long as the other and the other properties of the entity or sibling relation is correct they are considered to be equal finally in the results and analysis uh, we have uh, analyzed them in three categories um, attributes present in single knowledge dictionary uh, in this way uh, the system was able to identify and classify all the attributes for example sales sales achievement and region and so where the attribute was only present in single dictionary in cases the attribute was present in multiple knowledge dictionary it was able to identify cases correctly by using adjacent words whereas in other cases uh, it was able to identify the terms but not classify them with much good quality uh, with good confidence for example uh, word target and sale since they wholly appeared in multiple dictionary uh, it was uh, it is an ambiguous case which it couldn't classify with much confidence for example in the first question target is a metric as well as the sale is metric and they are together metric in this first question whereas in the second case target is an entity whereas sales they as the metric itself and in the final case where attributes are not present in the knowledge dictionary at all it was able to identify them however because they did not appear in knowledge dictionary they stayed as unrecognized attributes in the final way for example performance and productivity in conclusion uh, we showed uh, the use of an and method of using a bidirectional lstm based architecture for named entity recognition task in the context of ai based business analysis we discussed the templating approach to create the training data set for from beginning with 1442 questions This bilateral model is more effective in majority of questions although the ambiguous question cases need extensive research into business attributes and how they can be linked together we can have an extension on the annex pipeline by including a spell checker to avoid any misses in knowledge queries and 
last we will see that usage of word embeddings as features for better classification of attributes which are not present in any knowledge system i am thankful for all the members of the artificial intelligence for their support and contribution and we are thankful for samrit singha for his valuable contribution in building the system